Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. This is episode two of Quick Freeze Versus. Today I'm going to go up one up against one of the greatest superheroes of all time, the actual first superhero of all times, the Man in Steel, Superman. And this will be Superman on the NES. Uh, now everyone knows who Superman is, or at least I hope they do. He's become a culture icon all over the world, much like uh, Mickey Mouse, or Coca-Cola, so he's pretty big. He's one of the most powerful superheroes out there. So, um, and originally, Superman was created in 1933 by two artists, or one artist and one writer, uh, writer Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. And uh, back then in 1933, Superman was not good. He was actually evil. Uh, he, he appeared in a first comic strip called Reign of the Superman, and uh, his powers weren't physical. He had, like, mind-controlling powers. So, but uh, later on, a few years after that, uh, Jerry Siegel, Joe Schuster, decided to make him a force for good and take away his mind-control powers and actually give him physical powers, much like Hercules or Samson. You know, one of those guys. So, and it wasn't until 1938... Superman didn't hit comic books. He actually, his first comic book appearance was Action Comics number one in 1938. So, uh, and back then, Superman, he couldn't, he had all his powers, but he couldn't fly. Not many people know about this. He couldn't fly back then. What he did is he leaped from rooftop to rooftop to rooftop. And that's where the, the, uh, the term comes from. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. The reason for that is, again, he couldn't fly. So, uh, I hope that's a good brief description of Superman's history, at least the beginning portion of it. So, uh, I'm just going to jump right in this, uh, take on Superman for the NES. Hopefully I can beat it. This game has, has a continue option, so um, the rule still applies. I'm giving myself up to 10 continues to beat this game. If I beat it in, within 10 continues, I've defeated Superman. If I can't, then Superman has defeated me. So, let's get at it. Okay, here we are, Superman from the Nintendo Entertainment System. Let's just jump right in this and start playing. Right off the bat, we get this cutscene with the Statue of Liberty. And uh, for some reason, she's talking to you, and she tells me that Metropolis has been invaded by the evil General Zod. And that I am Clark Kent. Oh, I did not know that. Thank you, Statue of Liberty, for letting me know that. <laughs> I will watch over you. Go now, Superman. Okay, we start the game off as Clark Kent inside the Daily Planet. Uh, Lois Lane tells you that the evil Zod gang is taking over Metropolis and they must be stopped. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know what the Zod gang is, they are the villains in the Superman 2 movie. Uh, yeah, that's right. This game is roughly based on Superman the movie and Superman 2. Now Superman has all of his powers right off the bat, no need to unlock 
you have them right at your disposal. You got x-ray vision that lets you see invisible enemies. You got a super spin that lets you dig through the ground. You also have heat vision which depletes very quickly. You have super breath 1 which puts out fires. And super breath 2 which freezes these little alien guys. And you also have Super Flight. Now let me explain how Super Flight works. When you use it, you go to the map screen, but you can only fly to the yellow lit areas. And you only get like two at a time. If you wanted to fly anywhere else in the game, you pretty much can't. You would either have to walk or get to a location where the game actually lets you fly there. That's like giving Green Lantern the power ring, but he's only allowed to use it when the Guardians of Oa allow it. Anyway, let's get back to the game. As you can tell, you play as Superman. But do you really? Look at this character. He doesn't even look like Superman. He looks like a child wearing Superman's pajamas. And this Superboy, he doesn't really have any attacks. He has this like lame punch that took me forever to figure out. So I spent the majority of the game jumping around trying to dodge enemies. And that's kind of hard to do since the jump is pretty much delayed and I kept hitting enemies just because I couldn't pull it off correctly. But after all that jumping, I finally made it to the first stage boss. Unfortunately, I had to use two continues to get to this point because Superman's attack just doesn't cut it. You may have already noticed, once you take enough damage as Superman, you revert back to Clark Kent. Which is kind of lame, because you lose all your superpowers when you actually need them. And I don't know who this person is. I'm supposed to be fighting the Zod Gang. Is it supposed to be her from Superman 2? She more looks like one of Darkseid's Furies. You know, the one with the whip. But once you defeat the boss, she doesn't just die, but she explodes. And with that, we finally completed the first mission in Superman for the NES. So Superman defeats the Zod Gang. Really? Hmm. I've only defeated one person, but okay. Then we find out the next mission will be... Stock market is panic. Stock market. Prices fall, cause unknown. Okay, there you have it. The idea of mission two is to find out why the stock market prices are falling. I don't know, that seems pretty boring to me, but okay, let's go. Luckily, before we leave the Daily Planet, Jimmy Olsen gives me a subway pass. Yeah, that's right. So take this in for a moment. Superman is given a subway pass to take the subway. It's Superman. Why wouldn't he just fly to where he, wherever he has to be? I don't, I don't understand this. I guess it's fine if you were Clark Kent, but what if you were Superman? Would Superman be riding the subway? Either way, what you gotta do is find these FBI agents, but it's kinda hard to do since everyone you talk to has nothing useful to say. Stay away from me, or I'll hurt you. Look at that, he just said that to Superman. And check out this guy right here. Hi, Superman. So this guy knows you're Superman even though you are Clark Kent. So once you find the FBI agents, they tell you that the Dragon Gang is down by the fish market causing trouble. So you gotta head down there and put a stop to them. Once you reach their hideout, all you really have to do is just take them out with a few punches and you collect the power up. That's another thing in this game that's actually kind of decent. Is if you do a heroic deed like clearing out a building full of bad guys, you actually upgrade your superpowers. So you actually make the the bar the energy bar longer so you can you know use more of that superpower as you progress in the game 
And as you can see right here, the police officer then tells you that there's fires over at the LexCorp Plaza that you have to go over and uh, put them all out with your uh, Super Breath 1 before you can take down the Dragon Gang. Okay, once you take care of the fires, you then make your way to the Dragon Gang's hideout. Once there, you just battle a couple minions until you reach the boss. This one's actually kind of tough. It took me a little while. I was just kind of like punching them. And as you see, I'm not doing a very good job as I'm Clark Kent. And I probably won't. Yeah. Okay. Well, I obviously didn't survive. So I have to use another continue. That actually puts me to number six. So uh, I'm just going to try to make my way down there and do it again. Okay. Here we are again. As you can see, I tried to use my heat vision on them didn't really seem to work, kind of drains really quickly, but with a few punches I was able to beat him again, making him explode once again. And that is the defeat of the Dragon Gang, which should put stock market prices back on the norm. And that ends level 2, or mission 2 as you can say. Find out what mission 3 is. Professor kidnapped during lecture. Okay. So definitely a lot better storyline than uh, stock market prices falling. So let's get to it. So as you start level 3, Lois Lane sends you downtown to meet a couple of FBI agents who say they have information on the missing professor. Once you get down there, they inform you that they've seen the professor being taken underground, which you must go and save him. So as you make your way through the sewers, you have to fight a whole bunch of these purple gangsters. And let me tell you right now, there's tons of them. I actually ha ended up using another continue, just so I can get down here. But once you find the professor, he tells you that Jay Falk forced him to put an evil mind inside a gigantic computer. Now when I first read this, I kind of thought Brainiac just for like a comic point of view. So as you make your way through the computer center, you finally reach the evil computer. And you can obviously tell this is not Brainiac, but I ask you, what does this remind you of? The giant supercomputer at the end of Superman 3, which actually makes sense since that movie came out in 1983 and this game didn't really come out until 1987, so it's actually a pretty good addition to the fans. And once you destroy the evil computer, you have to take down Jay Falk, which is actually not that difficult. If you just trap him in this little corner right here and just keep punching him away until he comes down, he's easily defeated until he explodes. I don't know why, but every single time I saw one of those bad guys explode, just made me laugh. And that actually ends level three. Superman has saved the professor, destroyed the computer, and er captured the bad guy. On to level four. Now level 4 is Stolen Things from the Museum, a challenge from Lex Luthor for Superman. Okay, now as you start level 4, uh, Perry White tells you that things have been stolen from three different museums by Lex Luthor and Lex left behind three fire creatures which you have to defeat in order to gain access to Lex Luthor himself and actually arrest him. So that is actually the main plot of this mission. Now this is something I probably should have mentioned sometime earlier. As you play through the game, these random icons uh, appear once you defeat an enemy. These actually refill your superpowers once you defeat an enemy and collect them. And also, these blue uh, crystals also appear, which I'm guessing is kryptonite. And if any, it's trying to relate to the comic books, actually makes sense because blue kryptonite does not affect Superman. Uh, there are two other colors in this game where um, 
it actually can hurt and damage Superman. One of the colors is red kryptonite. And of course, the green kryptonite. So both red and green kryptonite in the game will hurt and damage Superman to the point where it can actually kill you. And blue kryptonite will actually heal you in the game. So you want to collect as much blue kryptonite from these gangsters as possible. Because you're going to need all the blue kryptonite you could possibly get to take down uh, three of these fire demons that Lex Luthor has left behind in three different museums. They're actually pretty easy, though as you can see right here I'm trying to blow it out with uh, Super Breath 1 because that's what you use to blow out fire, uh, the fire. But in this case it just doesn't work so uh, what I ended up doing was just saying screw it and uh, getting in close and just start punching the thing. And they're actually pretty easy. All they do is jump back and forth. You wait till it comes down and you go in for the punch. And uh, you do this three times. And now once you do that, you get to fight Lex Luthor. This is probably the one and only time you use super spin in the game to get underground. But once you are underground, Lex, getting to Lex Luthor is really easy, but look at this guy. This is supposed to be Lex Luthor. He looks like an 8-bit version of Pigsley from Enslaved Odyssey to the West. And with that, that actually ends level 4. Superman defeats the Fire Beast. Lex Luthor is in prison. Metropolis is at peace, harmony, and... Wait, what's this? Could this be a level 5? Monster Gang's on the loose. So this is the fifth and final stage of Superman on the NES. And we find out a monster is attacking Metropolis. And we have to go out and get the story. But we all know as Superman, we are going out to actually stop the monster. Now on level 5, the game got really, really hard because all the villains were invisible and you could only see them with x-ray vision. And I actually kept running out of x-ray vision, So, but I actually made it to the monster, which was invisible of course. And uh, once you defeat him, he tells you that his boss is at Freedom Island, but unfortunately on the way back to the surface, I died, so that actually is my ninth continue for this game so hopefully I can beat this game uh, before I before I use uh, continue number 10 so uh, let's make our way to uh, Freedom Island and take on the boss of the game okay here we are we are about to fight the final boss or bosses of the Superman game for the NES um, Hopefully they're not too tough because, like I said, I don't want to go over 10 continues. But here we go. Go up a floor and we meet the first boss. Uh, she's actually pretty kind of tough because apparently she shoots uh, heat vision from her eyes just like Superman. But she's not that hard. You just keep pounding away and you'll get her. On the next level, you meet another guy who actually has super breath number one. Again, not too hard, just keep uh, punch him in the face. And on to the next and last level of the building. And here we meet the final boss of the game. He's a little difficult more than the other two just because he keeps jumping around and he has heat vision. But if you just stay strong and just keep punching him, he'll blow up just like any other enemy in the game. And there we have it, we've just defeated Superman for the NES. And for you, let you guys know, these are the real Zod Gang members. So whatever boss that was in level one, probably just an imposter. But here we are. The Statue of Liberty thanks us for saving the day and putting the evil Zod Gang into the Phantom Zone. And that's it. That's the end of the game for Superman on the NES. 
Okay, so there you have it. That was Superman on the Nintendo Entertainment System. As you can see, I, I only used nine continues to beat the game. So I have conquered Superman on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Um, my final thoughts of it. It's a hard game at the beginning just because of the controls. Uh, the jump was delayed. Uh, Superman's attack wasn't all that powerful. So, but after you play more of the game and learn the learning curve, learn the mechanics, it's actually a pretty decent game. So, uh, I wouldn't, you know, bash this game all that much. So, it wasn't a good game, wasn't a bad game. So, I, I, I still recommend this, especially if you love Superman. So, like I said, it's going to take you a while to learn the mechanics of the game and actually get good at it. So, um... Yeah, I, I did enjoy this game, and yeah, I, I'm glad to, I have it. So, uh, so thanks, guys. Thank you for watching uh, Superman vs. Episode 2. Uh, next In the next few weeks, I'll put up Episode 3. And um, to help me out, again, I'm going to make a list of all the superhero video games I have currently. And seriously, guys, I would love to have like comments on what video game you would like me to try out or try to beat so uh, please comment below on what game you guys would like me to see uh, until then I'm quick freeze and I am bringing games gamers together one game at a time